We're exploring artificial super intelligence with market expert Shah Galani. Join us as we dive into the future of ASI and its impact on investors. Let's get started. I am here with Shah Galani today, 40-year market veteran, former hedge fund manager, and chief investment strategist of Manward Press. He's a disruption expert, and this man knows his stuff. Shaw is here to shed light on the world of artificial intelligence and its evolution towards artificial super intelligence, ASI, and how this could reshape our economy. Shaw, I'm so excited to hear your insights on this. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it's a pleasure, Lacey. Thank you for having me. It's an important subject, and I look forward to addressing it with you. All right, so we have done dozens of videos on our channel, um, and more and more, AI is the topic of discussion. Um, besides the AI leaders like NVIDIA and Microsoft, many companies are jumping on the bandwagon. If nothing else, they're mentioning AI in their earnings calls and their transcripts. Um, shareholders seem to be enjoying the benefits, at least early on, but Shaw, you are drilling down to something with more potential than what we know as AI, and it's artificial super intelligence. That's why I wanted to have you on to speak to our audience today. Um, but this quote from Elon Musk caught my eye. You had mentioned it. Um, he says that ASI could start an age of abundance or destroy humanity. To me, that sounds exciting, but it also sounds a little bit ominous. Uh, can you tell us more about ASI and what it really means for investors as an opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. First, first of all, a lot of folks don't know this, but there are really three types of AI. And the first type is really the only type that's in use now. And that's really a generally called as weak AI. Um, we, a lot of scientists know it as narrow, intelli narrow intelligence. And that is where a model is trained with data mostly, and mm -hmm. it essentially does one function. And it may, may do it very well, may look much more complex than that, but this is AI as we know it now. And we see that, and, and again, this manifestation in terms of looking more complex is probably best seen in Watson's and IBM's Watson. That's really a single model, narrow model AI device system platform and so is siri so is amazon's alexa and so mm -hmm. is chat gpt these these are really uh, they're not first iteration ai but this is narrow ai this is we're at the very first stage this the second which is theoretical is is again and this the the scientific term for this is strong ai uh, most people i think generally call it general ai but mm -hmm. it's Strong AI. It doesn't exist yet. It's we're on the verge of it. And, and that's where intelligence, artificial intelligence starts to learn from things it's done before. It's, it's using data that it has to look for new data to improve itself. So it's actually learning. And when you think about that, that's a little scary mm -hmm. that, that computers are going to be able to do that. But, that. but that's really what it does. It's going to create and, and accomplish tasks better than humans can do it. Mm -hmm. And then we get to, again, seemingly far off super AI or ASI. Now, again, artificial super intelligence to me is going to happen a lot sooner than people think it's going to happen for some scientists. They think it's so far off, we shouldn't really have to worry about it. I don't agree with that. I think mm -hmm. we're on the verge of it. Artificial superintelligence is essentially when artificial intelligence can create further artificial intelligence. It basically becomes its own entity. In some sense, there's a consciousness to it. But there's a there's an IBM, I, I read a lot of IBM reports on, I call IBM the OG of AI. Mm -hmm. And I, I read a report recently, I'm just going to quote it to you because this, this shook me. So IBM says that applications processing super AI capabilities will have evolved beyond the point of understanding human sentiments and experiences to feel emotions, have needs, and possess beliefs and desires of their own. So this is, I think, the frightening aspect of, of ASI that people think, so we, we're going into this world, and we are, mm -hmm. where the computers are going to be cognizant. Um, they're, they're going to have a life of their own, and they're going to improve themselves by using their intelligence to, to write code to improve themselves. And mm -hmm. so there, there's no limitation when, we, when ASI really comes to fruit 
it, it, it will change the world. I mean, we already know that yeah. AI changed the world, um, but super AI, that's another level. That's another universe that, that was going to exist here on earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So AI seemingly gets better every day. Um, but so I've heard you speak of something that I haven't heard from anyone, the idea that the final transformation from artificial intelligence to artificial super intelligence is set to occur during a cataclysmic event called the singularity. Can you tell us more about that specifically? Yeah, the, the the idea of a of singularity has been around really since the fifties, and um, you know, in scientific terms, it, it's the understanding that computers would eventually evolve to some point where they, you know, again in in scientific terms and or in just in terms of hyperbole, take over the world mm -hmm. because they would become that intelligent and that capable. So singularity now in the modern era refers to computers in terms really to ASI manifesting itself where it now controls itself and it, humans have lost control. So, but there are elements of singularity and singularity is often represented as a clock mm -hmm. where midnight as the clock is moving, where midnight, when the clock strikes midnight, that's it. We have reached, you know, ASI is prevalent and the singularity has occurred and, and we're at some other point on earth we're mm -hmm. in some universe here on earth and so singularity you're going to hear more about that as we progress in terms of growth of every type of artificial intelligence and eventually getting to asi now shot uh fortunes are made and they're lost on these kinds of events what can investors do right now to capitalize on this opportunity i mean they shouldn't just be going out and investing in any ai company so what can they be doing right now no, you're right, uh, Lacey, they shouldn't be going out and investing in any AI company because that AI narrative is very powerful now. Mm -hmm. And I you mentioned it, we're seeing it in earnings reports, we're seeing it in you know management discussions of earnings, uh, we're seeing it in press releases. And a lot of the, and, and companies are changing their names to incorporate artificial intelligence in their names. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that is hype and they know it helps sell the stock where you know bids come in for stocks, all of a sudden they, there's a name change I look into some of these things. I'm like, this is nonsense. You know, the the, the purpose of AI is 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 gigantic. The opportunities are gigantic, but mm -hmm. most of the companies that are that say they're incorporating AI are doing it to such a small degree that we probably have more access to use it more with Chat GPT than they're actually able to put it into their businesses to create a difference in top line, bottom line performance. So mm -hmm. you have to be be very, I would say, leery of that. So the way to really go is with this, the tried and true AI leaders, mm -hmm. which are, we know, the chip makers, the likes of NVIDIA and ARM. Uh, there, there are plenty of great chip makers out there. But the easy path right now is where the smart money is already going. It's in the big names that have the money the capability of growing their AI and manifesting it throughout you know, their enterprise systems. I'm talking about the likes of Microsoft, which is my favorite. I think Microsoft is going to lead and you know, it's $13 billion investment in open AI speaks volumes as to where Microsoft wants to go. Well, mm -hmm. they are now incorporating open AI's technology and chat GPT all kinds of features throughout their suite of office products. So it's already there. Mm -hmm. And they're going to continue to do that. Google is another one. You know, if you think of the data that Google has that it's able to use, well, that's what feeds artificial intelligence is data. So you look at someone like Google, they're, they're going to be another go-to. The, the, the standard bearers like Meta and the most of the Magnificent Seven um, are going to be where the easy money is going to be made. You see that right now. You see it in terms of investors are chasing those names. Why? It's not just because they're big tech, not just because investors think that the Fed is going to cut rates. It's because that's where the growth is going to be, especially when it comes to AI applications within those big tech names. And so that's the easy money. I think investors, you go if they go farther afield, it, it's, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack, trying to find that small biotech company that's going to come up with some new drug. And good luck. If, if they do it, they'll mm -hmm. hit it out. Art, but those are needles in a haystack. So on this channel, we like to talk about risks, risk tolerance frequency. Uh, Shaw, how much risk is involved with this type of investment? 
Well, if you if you stick with the winners, if you stick with the names, the big names, very little. I think very little risk. It, now, a lot of investors like to shoot for the moon, you know, trying to hit those grand slams. Yeah, I like to hit them, you know, one base at a time. I don't care if I hit singles and doubles. I'm very happy with that because eventually mm -hmm. you'll round the bases. So that means the big names, the big tech names. The, as far as risk goes, there are now tools that investors can use. If, if investors are trying to chase that needle in a haystack, there are all kinds of tools they can use, including GPT. Um, mm -hmm. There's a couple of names I pulled out for you. There's a they, there's just some free freemium sites there. There's some really cool stuff. There's there's um, uh, one company which you can go to is High Charge GPT. Now, what what I like about them is they can create the interactive with no coding necessary infographics with with really simple prompts so think of like chat gpt how simple those prompts can be and what you get out of chat gpt mm -hmm. well this does it for gra infographics which is really wonderful because you can then basically create scenarios as how how you visually want to follow some of these riskier stock plays and i think that's where as far as risk tolerance goes you need to have your stops and you need to know mm -hmm. whether it's going to work out or not you need to have a backup plan for getting out um, uh, canva c-a-n-v-a is another site that folks can go to it's a, another freemium site um, this is online text um, into infographics and in, in, it's a image generator, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I, I look a lot of, I have charts up everywhere. I'm always looking at charts. I like to see things visually as far as the stocks, especially the riskier stocks, the mm -hmm. big names. I don't care. I'd like to buy the dips on the big names that I want to hold for a long time, but I have a lot of speculative plays that I like and then do very well with, but I have my limitations as far as risk tolerances. I don't have a lot of tolerance for a lot of risk in those because mm -hmm. I know they're dangerous plays, that every once in a while, I'm going to hit a grand slam. So I just want to keep the losses on some of those um, fairly tight and, and visual representation of, for instance, you know, graphs are to me very important. That's mm -hmm. that's what I like to do. And I think investors would do very well to kind of follow along with visually just to see how things are looking for them. All right. So given the unpredictable nature of ASI's impact, um, you kind of touched on this, but can you tell us more about what sectors you believe will be most affected by the advent of ASI and how can investors diversify their profile to maybe mit uh, mitigate these potential risks? Great question. And I unfortunately I have, a, I hope it doesn't sound like a pat answer, but it, it is the, the answer that all sectors are going to be impacted mm -hmm. by AI. Um, we don't think necessarily of materials, industrials, and and some of those areas is like, well, that's going to be way, way down the road. They're already incorporating AI, and they're going to have to if they're going to want to be able to compete at the level that everyone's going to want to, because the incorporation of AI is going to allow greater productivity, greater top line revenue growth, bottom line, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not just, you know, we, we're thinking of communication services, we're thinking of technology sectors, we're thinking of all those, but those are automatic. Those That's where technology is the front burner story. Mm -hmm. But everything else is going to be impacted. I, I think that probably the most impactful um, that people, I, I think probably see, but aren't focused enough on, is going to be in healthcare. And I think what AI is going to do for healthcare, for drug development, um, for procedural protocol development uh, is going to be staggering. I think it's going to, it, that's where a lot of money is going to be made. So, but there isn't a sector that isn't going to be touched. I, I'm looking at industrial companies and manufacturing companies that are starting to incorporate that uh, AI in terms of robotics, in terms of supply chain management and things like that. Which you don't, mm -hmm. It's kind of mundane sounding. Yeah. Those things make a difference and they make a difference where it counts in terms of profitability. And so there isn't a sector that isn't going to be affected. It's just a matter of catching it at the right time. Mm -hmm. And within every sector, there are going to be the, you know, the, the high stepping winners and they're going to be the laggards. So I like to go look for the high-stepping winners that are going to lead um, in, in all of the sectors. And I like to diversify into different sectors. So mm -hmm. I'm looking very much through uh, all these companies that I look and research in terms of what is their application of AI and how do I think, uh, I, I think they're applying it properly and do I think it's going to make a difference and how soon. Okay, so for the investors that are interested in the ASI space, uh, what are maybe some of the key indicators or metrics that you monitor, you think that they should monitor when they're evaluating companies that are claiming to work towards ASI? 
<laughs> it's there aren't any, unfortunately there aren't any good in simple indicators where you can say oh if that reaches this level that's mm -hmm. not good if that reaches that level that's a good buying opportunity there aren't any i've been looking for them i've been trying to consider how to create them mm -hmm. very difficult because you really you're trying to separate the wheat from the chaff as far as these these narratives that we talked about and and what ceos and cfos are saying and there isn't so, so i for me um it, it's really following again this is using ai using right for example chat gpt to to find out where the narratives are you know query things like you know uh, what are the hot topics right now in mm -hmm. AI? And you know, ChatGPT is going to come up with all these names, kind of different companies. Then look at those graphically and see where where things might go, and then dig a little bit in in between the the you know the earnings notes and and see how they're applying AI. So as far as the indicator goes, if I come up with something, uh, Lacey, you'll be the first to know because it, it's we need it, and and I'm mm -hmm. sure there are. A lot of folks working on it. You guys may be working mm -hmm. on it too. I mean, it's something that is is I think would be uh, adopted instantly. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there anything else you want to leave our viewers with today on this topic, Shaw? Uh, yeah, I, I want to say that we should be uh, really enthusiastic about everything AI, um, but always keep an eye on the fact that there is a dark side to AI. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. It's a double-edged sword. Uh, long before we see the dark side, we're going to see the brilliance of AI. But um, I'm not, uh, I don't disagree with Elon Musk. I don't disagree with many of the naysayers who who warn, uh, including Sam Altman of OpenAI, who do warn that there is a, a side to AI that um, we can hypothesize about and hopefully won't see, but we will likely get run over by it so it's something to keep an eye out on that's that's the, that's the good and the bad I want to leave your audience mm -hmm. with all right well thank you so much for your time today Shaw I really appreciate your insights and I just know that our viewers are going to as well so tell us where can people find you well, you can find me at manwordpress.com. Um, I, I write a, a totalwealthresearch.com as a, my free e-letter, which is chock full of stuff and ideas on trading and, and investments, including obviously a lot in AI. Um, and that's where folks can find me and hopefully um, and, and, and pick up some good tips. Yes, well, we only scratched the surface of what could be the defining challenge and opportunity of our lifetime. We encourage all of our viewers to stay informed, stay engaged as you consider these advances. I will link all of Shaw's information down below so you can follow along on his research and get more insights. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. And once again, thank you, Shaw, for your time today. Thank you, Lacey. It's been my pleasure.